sounds good to me. Doing what I want, any time I want. Maybe I should start saving for that. Retirement might seem like a far away daydream, but let me assure you, it is possible. You just need a plan, a retirement plan. But now you're wondering if a 401k or IRA is better for retirement. The legal team wants me to say that we can't answer that for you because we're not financial advisors, but we can show you how to think about it. So let's start thinking. K's and IRAs are pretty similar. They're both investment accounts designed to help you save for retirement, and they both have tax benefits. You'll also hear people talk about compound interest. The more money you invest now, the more that will grow year over year until retirement age. Early is better, which is not the case for meetings. I swear, if Tyler puts one more Monday 8 a.m. meeting on my calendar, I will... The point is, the difference between starting to invest at 30 instead of 40 can literally be hundreds of thousands of dollars. So whatever you do, start. Investing just a little money early is better than investing no money at all. Just don't get stock tips from memes. Let's dig into the details on your options for retirement accounts. First up, 401ks. 401ks are employee-sponsored investment accounts designed for retirement. Employers offer these as a benefit to attract and keep employees. 401ks are usually offered through an online portal of sorts. Your employer or HR director will show you where to go. And when you opt in to put some of your paycheck there, you are actually investing in the stock market. Most 401ks buy into mutual funds or giant pools of diversified assets like stocks and bonds. You just set it and forget it. Someone else does the work. There are two main types of 401ks, traditional and Roth. Traditional means you don't pay taxes until retirement, assuming you don't withdraw early. Roth 401ks make you pay taxes up front, but then you don't have to pay taxes on gains and withdrawals later on. IRAs come in traditional and Roth form as well. Generally speaking, saving with the Roth when your income is lower and shifting to traditional as your income rises may result in lower taxes overall. And if you think you'll move to a state with lower or higher state income taxes, that's also something to consider. Okay, 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 enough of that tangent. 401ks are awesome for two main reasons. Retirement accounts have limits for how much you can put in. That's because without limits, people could just put all their savings into these accounts and skip a lot of taxes. So what's great is that 401ks have a high contribution limit, up to $23,500 in 2023. 30K if you're over 50, that's almost 2K a month. And that does not include whatever your employer matches. Speaking of which, the second benefit is employer matching. This is when a company agrees to match a percent of whatever you put into your 401k. A lot of employers offer a 3% salary match, but it changes company to company. For 3%, if you make $100,000 and you put in $3,000, then your employer will also put in $3,000, putting your total up to $6,000. You may also see 50% up to X%. percent. So if it says 50% up to 8%, that just means they'll match half up to 8% or 4% overall. That really adds up. Following the same 3% and $100,000 example, five years of matching means an extra $15,000 that's growing for you. Some employee matching uses vesting, which sets rules around how long you have to be at a company before you own the funds they matched. So. If you are 100% vested after five years, that means you own all of the money in your 401k after five years. If you leave before then, you'd keep your contributions, but you may lose all of the employee match dollars. So take a look at your handbook for details and figure out if the vesting schedule matches with how long you think you'll stay at the company. Okay, up next, IRAs. 
IRA stands for Individual Retirement Account, not the Irrational Raccoon Association, which I was very sad to discover. Employers don't set IRAs up. People self-fund them, which just means you're responsible for opening the account and putting money into it. Most big banks offer these and they aren't hard to set up once you know what you want. IRAs have traditional and Roth versions with similar tax implications, and they also have limits. But these limits are a lot smaller. The IRA limit for 2023 is $6,500 and $7,500 if you're over 50. First off, you don't have to choose if you have access to both. In an ideal world, you're maxing out both each year, kicking butt all the way to sunny beach retirement. But let's be real, that's not the norm. So if you're torn about where to put your dollars, here's how we'd think about it. If your employer has matching, use it. You don't have to max out your 401k, but you should at least get as much of the match as possible. It's free money. Also, some employers don't offer 401ks, but do have SEP or simple IRAs, which are other forms of matching that are related to pensions or IRAs. Whatever it is, if they match you, get that money. If you have additional money to invest after matching, consider contributing to an IRA. IRAs give you more investment flexibility and usually have lower fees. Plus, having retirement and savings in different buckets can be useful from a tax perspective. This is known as tax diversification. If you still have savings left over, put the rest into your 401k. Since you still get tax benefits, you could also look into a health savings account, or HSA, that you would use for health expenses. If you don't have employee matching, you can start by maxing out your traditional Roth or IRA. You get the best blend of customization and low fees that way. If you're self-employed, remember, you can open up your own self-employed 401k too. Employee matching is a no-brainer, but you should spend time thinking through the Roth versus traditional choice. Taxes can really bite, and a lot of what is best for you depends on your unique circumstances. And while it's really great to invest as much as possible, as early as possible, don't put your short-term stability at risk. You still need an emergency fund, you still gotta pay your credit cards off, and it's okay to eat more than rice and beans. Just make steady progress and set a recurring amount that feels like a good balance between saving, enjoying your life, and having security. And don't be too hard on yourself. We've got enough stress as it is. Thanks for checking us out today. If you'd like to see more videos just like this, you know what you can do? Click right here. And as always, like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.